Okay. Uh, oh, well, that's good. That makes it much simpler. So that's how we're going to reconstruct our site. So we need we need two. We need another input, uh, which is for the books. Um, but for the purposes of experiment, uh, that's a good first step. So over here, we should now. Uh, it should be the same thing, of course. Make sure we load in this page. Interesting. Still says test article. Oh, um, yeah, that's because I just copied posts, didn't I? I didn't actually copy the real article. Okay. Okay. Uh, so I can test this by uh, coming out of here. Um, uh, dot dot slash articles slash test twenty twenty test HTML uh, and move that to uh, post twenty. Posts 2020 12 HTML. Rerun the build. Okay, yeah. Hey, hey, we get the actual title now. Google test article. Which so obviously things like this abstract will eventually become uh, a tilde, uh, yeah, uh, for for the article as a whole, and also it will be uh, above the fold content for the home page. Okay, so we'll, we'll put uh, we'll put the abstract in as part of this. Uh, that's something we need to work on. Um, it's unfortunate because of course blogs are in reverse chronological order but as i say these articles are really intended to be more or less standalone pieces there might be a few that go on for more than one page. it's the books that are going to be the coherent content and those will be accessible either from a section up here because this is all uh, this is all on index so yeah this uh, uh, this bit of content here uh, is all coming from the index or here. So we'll probably put something in here about how to access the books, but also uh, there'll be a books and an article section up here. I mean, there's lots of stuff to do. Uh, we've got to do the tags and categories so that people can find stuff. Uh, possibly even do a search search engine uh, added on here. I'm not. I'm not too worried about. Like, I mean, Google will scan this anyway. Uh, but uh, a simple static site search engine. So uh, uh, something. Let's just say for. Let's get back to our search. Record instant search. Blah, blah, blah. Uh, it uses web cheddar. Uh, Jason. Jason following the root of George at the bottom main it searched on Jason. It goes through each post. Categories and tags me. That should more posts puts it into the key value. Try out on a local machine or verify search chasing search site folder. See whether all the values are generated or not. The output will be something like this. Uh, 
Now the search grid. Uh, 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 a JavaScript. Okay. Uh, so the search. Actually, so is it just searching tags and categories? Looks like it. Mm. Okay, so what is his? I mean, I'm guessing the JavaScript just grabs that JSON from the server. Not helpful. Um, all this is doing is grabbing that JSON from using the yeah, there we go, JSON uh, response text. Yeah, that's all it's doing. Okay, well, I mean, that's certainly a way to go. It allows people to at least search on the title uh, and the tags and the categories, which I suppose covers 90% of what you do. Um, I mean, there's a limited amount you can really do on a static website without implementing end anyway. Uh, so what we've got here. Yeah, this is just doing the same thing. I mean, you could you could probably go further than this. I, uh, I mean, the problem is that the more facility you provide for the search, uh, the bigger the data file that needs to be uploaded to the client in order to perform the search. Uh, and, and so tags and categories are a pretty good choice for you know, keeping it simple. Um, I'm gonna keep on. That might very well prove to be the most sim the simplest way of implementing a basic search. If you wanted to do a full text search, I mean, it wouldn't be that difficult because you could you could you could create uh, a basic index. Uh, just looking at all the words. I mean, you can get rid of garbage and all that, you know, all that kind of crap. Um, and just just keep uh, a lot of the keywords. 
and if you if you if your web if your site didn't get too big uh, that wouldn't be too odious um, yeah once once you've got text and compressed it uh, transferring it up to the client that little javascript actually do the search using that index um, wouldn't be particularly problematic um, and I guess if your site got big enough that that wasn't enough then yeah you, you could use other techniques like for example just going to Google because <laughs> uh, Google will already have indexed it unless you explicitly tell it not to and that's pointless because um, let's face it 99% of people are going to find your site by Google search so uh, yeah yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe we'll do something else. Uh, we'll, we'll have a play with that. Um, so for now, I think that'll do for today. Uh, Pooch won't feed him shortly anyway. All right, mate. Um, I think we've now very quickly and probably very confusingly covered all the basics of what I'm trying to achieve. Um, the next steps. Uh, the first, uh, I mean, for the most part, I want to be testing this in isolation uh, just while I get down um, the basic transformation. Uh, I suppose uh, I haven't actually created the website. Uh, 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 yeah, uh, I'll, I'll create a remote. Um, Alright, so that's the one. Right. We don't need to create posts. Books obviously is going to become the destination for our books. Uh, site is the destination for site. Um, so there are several things that need to be done here. One is tidying up uh, this. The tech transformations for both. Uh, PDF and for HTML, so that our items under articles and under books. I mean, one of the other issues actually uh, is that under articles, um, what you'll notice is uh, there's a, there's a lot of potentially there's a lot of header information um, that will be the same. On everything, uh, you know, because one one of the things we're going to have to put in here is uh, in this package, Salty Vagrant, and that will bring our own styling in for the Salty Vagrant package, uh, which is a good thing. The, uh, it also means when we're doing the HTML, it will look for the Sulky Vagrant uh, HTML alternative file. But again, th this is going to be standard for every article. So it begs the question, uh, you know, should we be using something like subfile? Uh, which if you look at the documents, look at the books rather, uh, this Uh, get ahead of myself. Okay, you can see here that this this is sort of like the bare bones. Uh, it doesn't really say very much. It just pulls in a load of packages, and then it can it uses subfiles to construct the actual document. Yeah, so the subfiles contain the actual structure of the document. So arguably, within a um, Within an article, uh, 
uh, you know, the vast majority of this can be standardized and the, it's only really the actual content that will vary. So what we want is this standard stuff, the title obviously being an exception, um, to be put into subfiles. Now, subfiles, I'm pretty sure you can put things like title into subfiles. I need to look into that. Uh, I'm pretty sure I've already captured this. Right, so, I mean, you still need the reference back to the, like the article and the begin block. So it's really just all the header stuff. The question is, how do I inject uh, Uh, or it may, it may not be it, it may not be worthwhile uh, yeah because the other way of doing it is to just soft link uh, the framework ah, no, cause even I'm pretty sure that that title has to be in the header. Title date author are all up in the header, and I'm pretty sure they have to be. Never done it any other way, is it? And then again, I've been in this situation. Just take that and put it in. Well, as long as it's before the make type. That's done. Mm, make for HT, or oh, do we do it really? Oh, it doesn't really matter, does it? Okay, no author given, but mm, nobody cares about it, don't they? Right, it, it worked. Let's just make sure. Copy PDF file. This is a bit, a bit long winded. I happen to have it on this virtual machine. I do. Do you have one? Here. Yeah. 
Uh, well, it certainly put the heading in there. Well, that makes things a bit easier uh, because with with the heading actually uh, inside the document, it means. Uh, Uh, if I go back to the article, then uh, go back in here and go, um, but what I can do is I can just have a generic article framework. Uh, take everything from there down to the beginning of the document. Uh, lines. Oops. Uh -huh. so that's, if you like, that's the framework. Uh, and all we've got in here is well, all we need to do is include uh, the sub. <coughs> now you might think to yourself, well, where does that get us? Because you've still got to specify. Sub file. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that doesn't seem to win us very much. But it does. Uh, all of these are now standardized to something. Something like that uh, and so when you when you uh, when you're producing the article Mm -hmm. Exactly what I was worried about. Oh, bugger. No. Uh -huh. Okay. He's so far. That's because I'm an idiot. Not dot dot article. It's just, I mean, it will be eventually. Cool. So, so the, the trick here is we don't need the article. Uh, you know, we don't need this uh, to actually include the sub document because we're never going to produce this article. But what we can do is we can take all of the header information and keep it in there. Uh, because by building the individual articles, uh, the uh, what what this does is 
when it sees this it uses this document to get the header information right so what we can do now is we can keep all of the header information for an article together uh, and to be honest it will probably remain as it is uh, but if it doesn't then at least we've got one place okay and so when we're building this we loop over every article uh, or we have a make folder do it for us and it will just build the article which will then refer back to the main tech to get the header information for the rest of the document will be contained in here so we've simplified our article document somewhat uh, I mean, we could go further look what's the point um, uh, I mean you can see here that really uh, okay we've got the main document class to pull in our memoir make it an article uh, we've got subfiles which is necessary in order to make this whole process work uh, although arguably not but mm. uh, then we've got our own format uh, but we might put other stuff in as well you know there, it's possible that we put other stuff in here that doesn't belong in salty and vagrant as the sort of generic styling but we need to put in the header for some reason uh, the nice thing is as i say it helps to simplify and standardize our article form now we could go further no, but I, I don't see any that, that that to me that again separates out style from substance to all of the header information contains all of the style specific stuff although most of it is I mean, it's easy enough for us to go back and plug it all back in uh, but i think that's not a bad way of doing it so if i move article text up one level and change that okay. well, that should still build okay in fact that is one thing that we could standardize because they're all going to be authored uh, i can put the author in here uh, let's only specify otherwise okay yeah so now Copy the PDF down to it and King that now got. Uh, now I've got author uh, and the, the date is filled in by default although you can fix that as well uh, which we will ultimately maybe uh, I haven't decided yet but yeah yeah so there's one advantage uh, we can standardize certain information Okay, uh, here's, a, here's a question. What happens if I override the file locally? Yeah, so I've, I've defined title here, but what happens if I redefine author? I think it will just override it my gives a warning there you go it's overridden it
So that's good. So basically, my name will be the default, but if anybody else authors an article, uh, it can override it. And given that 99.999% of the time, it's Right. Okay. Well, okay, that will do. Thank you.